Hey guys, uh, thanks for checking out my my video uh, and coming to my channel. I really appreciate all the extra views and all the new subscribers. It's been really fun to kind of answer your questions and talk to you um, and discuss boxing. You know, um, that's why I do this. You know, I've only recently started like kind of changing the format and caring a little bit more about my channel and its presentation um, um, because I've been getting some really good advice from someone telling me, you know, giving me some, you know, interesting feedback. Um, and, uh, but, you know, mostly um, I do this because I like to talk about boxing. I love to discuss it. Um, I've been watching boxing since I was... 14, um, maybe a little younger. Uh, I've always been fascinated with combat sports, uh, like doing, I used to do karate when I was a kid, then I did taekwondo, then it was just a group of me and my friends. We would ha basically have a fight club and we would just, you know, basically have MMA fights. Um, and then I got into boxing when I was 19, uh, did boxing for over 10 years, competed, trained, um, did coaching. Um, when more coaching when I was injured than, than not, but I kind of had to stop boxing because of injuries and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, anyway, I, I love boxing. I love watching film. I love studying it, uh, learning about it. You know, I didn't have like a, a lot of people to kind of teach me that, that skill of watching a fight. And I remember my coach one time, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm getting into like too much crazy stuff, but he, ha he was telling me about this gym around the corner from his gym and he's like, Hey, yeah, we're going to go over this. Uh, this guy was a world champion, or he fought a world. He fought for a world title. Uh, we're gonna get some sparring with him, and he. Um, I'm not trying to talk about who he is or nothing, but um, he put the guy's tape on of who he was fighting, um, and I was just blown away that that guy had had a professional fight with this like famous Hall of Fame boxer. He lost. He he lost. But my coach put it on to get me to watch him and watch tape of him. And this was in my like my second year of boxing, and I remember watching this and just being like okay, what am I supposed to get out of this? I don't, like, I'm watching him throw punches? Like, am I supposed to be, like, I didn't know what I was looking for. So learning how to watch tape and learning what learning what I was seeing uh, was really important process of developing for becoming a better fighter myself. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm really glad to kind of share it with you guys. Um, anyway, into round three today. Um, round one was based off of uh, Crawford, and I'm going to be talking about a new concept. It's not a new concept, but it's a new way of explaining it. And I want to talk about it, like, you know, I talk about it a lot, controlling your opponent, right? You want to faint them. You want to get them to react to what you're doing. Um, because if you don't faint, most fighters can just counter any random punch that you throw. You throw a hard jab, boom, they can counter it. You throw a hard right hand, boom, they can counter it. You throw a hard right hook or left hook, they can counter it. You throw a one, two, three, right? They can counter it or they can counter the first punch or they can catch the first and counter the second or, you know, just catch you in between rhythms uh, because that's what they, they practice to do. And the idea that I want to kind of talk about is um, uh, layering your offense or layering your defense. Um, and I was kind of trying to explain this idea to one of my friends and talking about it. And I don't know how I, I that was just the way that I explained it is that it, you wanted it to be, um, you wanted it to be layered. And I think that that's a fantastic way to discuss this idea of setting your offense up, creating layers, right? So uh, in round one, uh, Crawford wanted to layer his defense with his lead hand, right? He wanted to control Horn. He wanted Horn to say, hey, I need to get around this lead hand, or Crawford's rather this way, right? I need to get around this lead hand so I can set up my offense. And um, and the ways that he does that, you know, is his head movement, right? Controlling it with his own lead hand. But there's this layer of defense that's in front of Crawford that Horn had to try and figure out. One of the ways that he tried to figure that out was pretending this layer was a real punch, was pretending that it was something that Crawford was committed to. So Crawford was essentially able to get Jeff Horn to unlayer all of his own offense by trying to counter this layer, right? And he was attacking Crawford on this layer, and it was putting him out of position, and Crawford was able to just sit there which is basically just be sitting here, but he was like this, and then he would get him to commit to offense, and he could counter them. Boom, right? And turn his own shots over, and and basically 
reduce crop a uh, horn reduce horn to his most basic layer of offense uh, which is just throwing punches at him um, and that's what he's been looking to do throughout the whole fight now this round is just amazing it's so interesting um, I really I'm really excited to kind of share it with you guys um, there are some really interesting things and some and uh, I'm probably gonna mess up and have to go back because like there's a lot to really digest in this round and how fascinating it is and how it winds up playing at the end um, and I actually put the video together like about like a, 12 hours ago so I kind of forgot a little bit so bear with me with my ums and my rights and my whatever bullshit um, but anyway we're gonna get into it and Crawford's not controlling the space between them right he thinks he has uh, horn already on his most basic layer so he's going to be able to easily counter and and make horn pay for his offense but horn makes an adjustment here you know one of the things that he was doing is he would take a step on his on his lead leg right and Crawford would make him pay for that right he would step and throw a shot right step throw a right hand right step and then Crawford started seeing that when he was layering his offense like this or using this to set it up um Crawford would start hitting him with the jab, or hitting him with the well, hitting him with the jab, or hitting him with the straight left, right? And on that timing, every time Horn would step on there, uh, Crawford was looking to make him pay for it. That was something he started picking up on even more in, in round two. Now, what Horn does here, he takes that step. Wait, <laughs> he whoops, I missed it. Ha ha ha. So he's gonna take the step right here. Now this is normally when Crawford would attack, right? But Crawford has already taken his step back. But what does Horn do? He touches his heel, and then he takes an extra step here to kind of break the rhythm, right? Broken rhythm, right? And changing it on Crawford and giving him an opportunity to score a blow. Now Crawford says, oh man, you got me right there. Uh, he's not able to counter. He's not able to move off the ropes or anything. Uh, and then he kind of ties up. Rubber Bird yells at him, tell him to let go. And then Crawford immediately goes, okay, he found a way to layer his offense in a way where he could catch me, right? Changing the rhythm or the timing of it. Um, so Crawford says, okay, I've got to take that layer away from him. So what does he do? He starts controlling him. And now he says, okay, now you have to work behind, you have to work behind my lead hand. And he starts using a layered defense. So now in, on top of his ability to slip, roll, right? Boom, move this way, catch and block, catch and block shots. Now he has an additional layer of defense where he's controlling his opponent, where he's controlling Horn, right? And now Horn looks to set up his shot right there. And as soon as he sets up his shot, right, Horn says, okay, he's got a layered defense. I need to layer my offense. I need to use my own probe. I need to use my own feints. I need to set this up and get around that layered defense. So he starts setting up his shot. And what does Crawford do? He takes a step back. And then layers his defense again. He says, okay, now you got to get behind this. you got to think, is this a real punch? Am I setting something else up? Uh, what am I doing when I stick my lead hand out there? And what does it do? It gets Horn to, to uh, reset. Horn says, okay, I'm not sure what he's doing. Now he's setting something up. Is he gonna, trying to punch me? Is he, you know, what is he doing? So he has to take a break and he's able to break his rhythm. And he's able to take that layer that Horn was using to set up his offense, hoping that Crawford was going to overreact or use the wrong layer to defend himself, right? If that was a real jab, maybe he would have went like this, or maybe he would have slipped to the outside, right? And Horn, that's what Horn is looking to do with that layer of offense, with that probe, with that feint, is get Crawford to slip and then put himself out of position, boom, for his own left hand or his own right hand, rather. Uh, but Crawford instead layers his own defense and gives him a probe. I hope this is making sense and it's not just sounding stupid like I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, anyway, now he goes back to controlling the space, controlling the space, right, and layering his defense. And then Horn gives him that very interesting offense where he did before, where he, whoops, he probes one time, probes two time, and then Crawford lands a straight left hand, right? And this is something that he was popularizing in round two, picking up on Horn's uh, propensity to probe, probe, and then sink in with the shot, right? And he's picking up on his ability on the on the different ways that Horn layers his offense. And this is going to be a really interesting round because this is one of the patterns that he's picked up on is when he's going to layer his offense in that manner. Usually he would do a probe, 
probe or like a kind of a fainting to control the space between him and Crawford and that'll allow him to kind of move his head and throw his own uh, right hand. But Crawford picks up on it because he's seen this pattern before, lands the straight left hand, moves off the line, and then immediately goes off of that and says and sees that Horn uses the same offense, the probing shot, while he's taking a step. And Crawford says, I remember this, and starts shooting his own combination. Uh, it doesn't work because Horn is mindful of that too, because that's one of the ways that off of that like foot dominance or that, that step forward while he's controlling the space on that same rhythm. So Horn is able to pick up on it and understand that he's setting traps for him, but not able to land offense either. But it's a very interesting like go between, um, between both fighters uh, that they're both making adjustment. It's very fascinating to see. Now, this is beautiful because this is exactly what Horn did just a second ago, right? Uh, in the first beginning stanza where uh, Horn comes forward, he starts taking that step on his lead foot, and then he takes that full step after. So we're going to watch Horn's left foot right here. He's going to take a step, and then off of it, he bounces off. And that's the timing that Crawford was was... Uh, that Crawford almost got hit to the body before, but Crawford is he picks up on it this time after he's kind of delayered the the offense. He understands that what's coming and is able to make an adjustment this time and catch him with the right hook. Just beautiful boxing right there. And let's go ahead and just rewatch that whole thing. Boom, catches him with the same shot. He's not controlling the space between them, and he's not he's not taking the layers away from Crawford. And then he goes to control the space, control the space, changing, making an adjustment because based, and the adjustment that he made is based on how, how Horn is looking to layer his, his offense against him. And then he's looking to take that offense away. Now, and then again, he's able to pick up on that pattern that he saw just a second ago, make an adjustment within 10 seconds uh, and land a great counter shot. Now, this is really interesting, and this is why it's so important to layer your, your offense. So now by this point, you know, 30 seconds into the round, Crawford thinks that he's taken all those layers away from Horn, and now Horn is back to the most basic and rudimentary level, and he's just going to start throwing punches at him because he doesn't feel comfortable using the feint because, as you saw, when he used the feint, Crawford would punch him. And he, did, he wasn't comfortable using the step because Crawford was able to pick up on that timing as well and pick up on that sense of... Uh, layering and understand that that was one of the layers he was looking to use to set up his shots um, and break timing so he could land shots. So he's taken that away. So Horn goes back to a different style of setting up and Crawford thinks he's going to commit to this shot. As you can see, he comes with the hook, but it was actually just a feint from Horn and Horn uses that, lay that layer to get uh, Crawford out of position and goes back to his straight right hand and lands a very clean shot right there because he's tricked Crawford into thinking that he's not using any of those defensive layers anymore and he's not using any feints or any probes because he hadn't been because uh, he thought that he was getting him on that same stepping timing so just by switching it up a little bit and changing the layers he's able to land a great shot now this is really important because Crawford is going to pick up on the fact that how fast this flash of the lead hand is and what that's going to signify later in the round. And it's just brilliant, you guys. But anyway, catches him with a great shot. Crawford still winds up probably coming out ahead with these with these shots. Boom, that shot to the body, that shot to the head, that other shot to the body. Um, still winds up winning the engagement, even though he lost the initial the initial battle by getting hit by that, left, that right hand. But now Crawford understands that uh, Jeff Horn... Whoops, let's go back to it. That Jeff Horn is looking to step on that on that lead leg, flash something, and then shoot another shot. And that's how he's looking to set up his shots um, at the moment. And that's how he gets him, is stepping on that lead leg, like he did before, using a feint, the layer, and then committing to his next shot. Now, this is brilliant. So right after that, Crawford says, oh, that's how you're going to set up your shots now? So now when Horn steps on his front leg, because that's the timing or that's the layer he's trying to add to his offense, he steps on it again, Crawford shoots some jabs, shoots some punches at him, sees him step on that timing again, shoots another jab. You can see Horn looking to take advantage of that timing as well because he understands that it's coming. But, um, you know, Crawford very experienced and, you know, able to come back with his own shot as well. Um, but very interesting that every time Jeff Horn makes an adjustment in his, his ability to set up his shots so far, 
Crawford immediately takes it away from him. Now again, Horn steps on that, um, or Horn is stepping on that timing, and he uses a flashing lead hand, which signifies that that he's going to commit to his next punch. And Crawford's able to catch him with a shot to the body and break his rhythm, make him reset by catching him with a punch. Now Jeff Horn stepping on that timing again and seeing that Crawford is looking to counter him with the right hook on that on that same type of layer, right? Now setting up traps again, leaning forward, leaning forward, and Crawford says, I know what you're trying to do, catches him with another jab to make him reset again. And now beautiful, beautiful. Jeff Horn again makes another adjustment and says, hey, I know he's trying to set me up on that timing now, so I'll just adjust my offense and understand that that shot's kind of come here. So he takes that step, understands that the counter is coming because or the, the rhythm-breaking shot, the one that he's using to control the way that Horn is setting up his offense to control those layers and shoots his, his straight right hand off the timing. Brilliant tactic from Horn, but Crawford does a good job of catching the shot uh, even though he kind of gets caught with that one, like a little bit on the neck, you know. Um, but then he kind of gets clobbered with this shot. Um, and now there's some, like, um, um, some people have, like, some differing ideas on what that shot is supposed to be. Uh, and whether it's supposed to just be dragging them down. I think it's just a missed timing because Horn has, you know, good head movement or whatever. It winds up being a slap. But um, that's not really the point. It, the point here is that Horn is making adjustments and Crawford is still able to make adjustments and take those timings away. Now, this is beautiful, you guys. The very next engagement, Horn understands that um, that, that timing worked. So he takes that step, and then he immediately slips to the side and gets him in the same... Wait, why did it go back? Why did it go so far back? That was not it. Um, so Horn comes forward on that same timing, expecting Crawford to be on that same timing. And when he takes that step forward... Crawford controls him now. He understands what Horn is looking to do and how Horn is trying to set up his shots, so he adds a layer to his defense. He says, okay, now you got to get through this lead hand control, right? And Horn thinks that that's going to be the same punch that he was throwing before, the one that he got to slip, but Horn is Crawford is able to pull back after forcing the commitment from Horn because Horn thinks that that was the layer of defense that he was going to use was committing to the jab, but he just probes the jab, gets Horn to commit to his offense, and then pulls back and lands a great left, uh, great right hook right there. Just beautiful layering and understanding of layers from Crawford uh, as he pulls back, gets away from that first left hand, uh, and then comes with his own hook right there. Uh, and you can hear it with the sound that it lands. Um, I'm not sure actually if Horn's uh, right hand lands. Let's actually check that out. It does look like it touches him a little bit, but that's not really the point because we're talking about the initial engagements and the way that Horn is um, looking to set up his shots and how Crawford is able to, even when he loses one exchange, make an adjustment for the next stage uh, the, and and make make adjustments in the way that he layers his defense in accordance to with with how Croft, with Horn, with how Horn is layering his offense and the different tactics that he's using specifically to set his punches up, it winds up being a really fascinating round. Uh, now Horn is doing the same thing. He understands that Crawford is looking to set those punches up again off that timing. So he steps forward and he starts giving him more feints and trying to relayer his offense so that Crawford commits to the first shot uh, and puts himself out of position. Does the same thing again. Boom. And then once he gets, he thinks he has Crawford out of position, he starts walking onto that timing, committing to a shot because the layers didn't work again. Uh, he wasn't able to get Crawford out of position, and Crawford's able to land a, a sneaky kind of left hand right there. Now, again, beautiful work from, from Horn, understanding that timing because Crawford went back to it, the stepping timing, and countering him after the layers didn't work. Now, Crawford, uh, now Horn probing with the lead hand. And he shoots two probes. Notice he shoots two probes. One, two, and then he pulls back, expecting a counter because Crawford has been timing him on that on that layer. Horn probing, and now he doesn't know how to set his shots up, right? Obviously, at this point, Crawford is just creating space and kind of running the clock and trying to force Horn into making a mistake first before he 
he commits to his own offense. Uh, so Crawford not really interested in like engaging or being the pressure fighter or being the one to layer his offense, um, partly because he doesn't really have any information on Horn's defense or how Horn re- is going to layer his defense anyway. So he wants to remain in this role of getting Horn to come to him because he has that's where all of his knowledge is of on Horn. Anyway, Horn decides that he wants to switch to Southpaw as well and fight him. And Crawford immediately sees how he's holding himself and commits to a wild right hook, which doesn't work. But look at how Horn uh, defends himself. He sees the punch coming. Whoops. And he leans back onto his back leg. Now, this is so brilliant. Right after that, he almost catches Crawford with his own shot. Maybe he does land one to the body. Kind of lands in the chest. And then Crawford pushes off. But Crawford saw how Horn dealt with his defense by just leaning straight back. And then immediately comes forward, flashes the lead hand, flashes the lead hand, and gets Crawford or gets Horn to lean back on his back leg where he has no opportunity to pivot or roll because all his weight is transferred to his and stuck on his back leg because he's here, right? He doesn't have any weight in his heel, so he can't really push forward or move or pivot or move his hips and get out of the way. He winds up just getting stuck there and getting caught with the shot. Um, and anybody who's like fought, like it kind of seems like it's counterintuitive, but you're just not going to be able to move your hips and get them out of the way uh, faster than your opponent's going to be able to throw a punch when you transfer your weight like that and you just rock back. Uh, and winds up getting caught with a brilliant shot. Um, and that's something that Crawford was able to set up literally after one engagement, right? One attack. Now, some more interesting stuff. Horn starts layering his defense or his offense, fainting on that lead leg, right? That stepping forward and then fainting the right hand, gets Crawford out of position. And what does Crawford do? He layers his defense. He understands that Horn is just trying to set up his next shot. So he looks to control him, but Horn makes an adjustment and shoots a double right hand. Uh, obviously, there's not going to be very much power, right? Because he's, his weight is already trans, uh, tr- ugh, transferred to his left leg. But it's a great way to kind of get points or get uh, Crawford out of position. Then Crawford says, oh, I see how you're looking to set up your shot off of this timing, right? The, the lead leg where he uses that to disguise his shot. And then Crawford's, Crawford sees it now and says, okay, every time he steps on that lead leg, that's how he's layering his shots again. He went back to that offense. So he starts taking that offense away and, and making uh, Horn make another adjustment. And then Horn goes back to the probing shot so he can control the space between them because he knows that Crawford is looking to shoot those shots. So Horn's showing that he's picking up on patterns. He's understanding what Crawford is doing and when Crawford is taking away his offenses and how he's doing it. He just doesn't have the correct understanding of how to go about taking those layers away from Crawford in the most appropriate way, right? He needs to do like a little bit of schooling. But uh, fascinating stuff right here. So he probes with the lead hand. And now this is beautiful. The most amazing part about this is that while Crawford gets away from controlling the space and using the layered defenses in the, I don't need to stand up for this, um, in the in the way that, that Horn is using his offense, uh, he does allow Horn to kind of make adjustments and change it up. But one thing that he is paying attention to is what each of these different layers look like. What each of these different styles of, of setups look like the probing one where it's flash flash shoot a right hand or the flash and then really quickly and that's um so the the flash flash are kind of slow like plotting ones and then that signals a right hand or the flash um when he's going to do only one setup it's flash really quickly and then shoot a straight right hand um or it's a straight right hand off of the leaning forward um which is very similar to this one but without it um and kind of uh, on that timing where he's going to take a step here and then s- take a second step and throw his right hand. So he's figuring all these things out, and he's able to start punching in between those layers that that Jeff Horn is trying to set up or that Jeff Horn is trying to use uh, because he's able to identify what each of them look like. So he's, he's more quickly able to take those layers away from Horn and make him pay without having to... Uh, worry about what what Horn is doing because he he's seen the layer before. It's so fascinating. Uh, I really didn't understand like 
I, I saw him doing it. I saw him fighting. I saw him taking the layers away and making adjustments. But I really didn't get a, a great sense until I did the film study of just how clever Crawford was being by getting a look at these. And that's why in the later rounds, it looks like he's just straight up whooping his butt, you know. Uh, but it's really because he's picked up on all of the patterns that Horn has made and he's able to make him pay for them. Now, Horn does the same thing. So he leans forward on that front leg. Crawford picks up on it, takes a step back, uh, and then knows that the second right hand is coming and makes an adjustment to continue moving away. Now, this one's really interesting. He's very wary of the, say, the double right hand again, and this time after the first right hand, decides to just body up with him and, and you know, no one wants to see them, you know, hug or wrestle or clinch. But he uses that as a defensive layer. I know nobody's going to like that, right? So, But now Horn has to get through the clinch in order to land some efficient offense. So in that regard, he's still controlling Horn and having a layer to his defense that doesn't allow Horn to just assault him, right? Um, but anyway, not allowing... Oh, beautiful. Not allowing him to use that double right hand to set up his shot because even when Crawford made that last adjustment, he still almost got caught. So understanding that he can mitigate that and take that away from Horn by not allowing it to be effective by just clinching with him when he feels that timing coming. Now Crawford or Horn again coming forward, taking that flashing lead hand, right? And this is what we talked about just a second ago. He comes forward on that timing, boom, and he starts flashing. And what does that tell Crawford? That tells Crawford that his next motion is going to be committing to a shot. And he immediately starts committing to a left hook of his own. Uh, Horn starts committing to his left hook of his own after he does that step right here to faint Crawford. And Crawford picks up on what layer and how Horn is going to set up his next punch. And he's able to immediately take that away from him and make him pay for it because he's seen this tactic before. He understands the patterns that Horn is, is presenting. And again, beautiful, beautiful. So he steps forward, leans on that, that uh, front leg, and Crawford says, oh, I remember this layer as well. I remember how you're setting this up. I, rem I know what you're trying to do right here to get me out of position or to get me to not be thinking about it so you can take that little step forward, boom, and then he catches him in between and is able to stop him from being effective with his offense set up right there. Just beautiful. And now again, again, beautiful. Takes that step. He sees that flashing lead hand. He knows that that's a setup for the right hand, and he comes with this uppercut. And the uppercut doesn't land, but that's not the point. The point is is that Horn is doing a great job of making adjustments. But what he's not doing is, and while he's rotating these kind of like paper, scissor, rocks and using multiple styles of his offense to create layers, right? Like the flashing and then the right hand and the probing and then the right hand and then the step and the cut under, you know, he has these different ways that he sets his shots up. But Crawford has been able to pick out what each of them looks like after figuring out also how to take those layers away and the different ways that he can mitigate the effectiveness of them. And now he's at a point where he's picked up on Horn's strategy and Horn's ability to set up his punches enough that, that none of those layers have any effectiveness. Now, there's also the, um, there's also the style of offense that Crawford was landing. When he has Horn moving back by his, on his own and on this back foot right here, he starts attacking him because one of the ways that Horn attacks and knows how to throw punches is moving forward off of that lead leg. But he doesn't know how to throw punches on his way on his back leg. So Crawford is able to follow him around right here and then follow him in the same exact vein right there and throw some offense and not really have any trouble uh, landing them. But just a fascinating round, really interesting stuff that happened in this fight. And Crawford really showing how smart he is and how well schooled he is and and um even though he's like uh he's a very very good fighter you know i know when pe someone in the comments said he's better than a good fighter better than very good i don't give out very good as a you know all willy-nilly you know it takes a lot you have to be a you have to be a very good fighter to get that keith thurman he's not a very good fighter he's a good fighter he's good he's all right but the layers that he uses to set up his punches are very predictable there and they're very basic they're not 
they're not the most effective style of traps or the most effective layers. Uh, the most effective layers are the probing ones where you like put your hand out, boom, and then you get your opponent to make a move to get away from them and you can walk them into another shot. And you would want that stuff to be done in real time. You don't want to just shoot your jab and then you see your opponent slips out the side of the jab and then you take a step back and then the next time you shoot the jab, they slip to the outside, but you pull that jab to throw a right hand because your opponent might be making uh, an adjustment too, right? Instead of them just slipping, right? Maybe they come, they slip to the out to the inside, boom, and they come with their own hook right there, and now you will throw in this right hand, and they just, you know, walk you into a left hook, um, and they walk, you know, they walked you into a shot, but you had no idea because you didn't test their defense, you didn't check what layers of defense that they were using. You relied on old information, and Keith Thurman has a very, um, a very unlayered offense uh, and no defense. You know, he can move his head and slip and roll and stuff, but that's not real defense because one feint or one probe and you slip the wrong way, you're going to find yourself out of position to defend the next the next punch. Um, anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This was a fantastic fight um, and a fantastic round to break down. I'm sorry it took so long, guys. I know it's long, but it was just beautiful. Um, thanks, guys.